Culture has been a main driver of the adoption and evolution of technology. And as we've progressed from Web 1 to Web 2 to Web 3, each iteration has reshaped our interactions, not just with the digital world, but also with each other. And today, we're seeing culture not only influence, but actively shape the next phase of the web. And I'm thinking beyond the dynamics of crypto Twitter and extending into the very fabric of builder communities. And right at the heart of it is BASE. Hey everyone, it's Jen. As you know, there have been three ecosystems at the top of my mind for me when I think about consumer crypto and how it can all play out, and BASE is one of them. If you didn't know, BASE actually started off as an internal tool at Coinbase. Jesse Pollock and his team were basically exploring different ways that they could help Coinbase engineers experiment on chain. And for those of you who don't know, this is Jesse Pollock. In 2012, Jesse co-founded Clef, which is a passwordless 2FA product. A few years later, he joined Coinbase managing their consumer web engineering stack, and now he's spearheading Coinbase's on-chain efforts with Base. So back to how Base got started. Jesse and his team get all of this positive internal feedback around what was known back then as BaseNet. They went and they did the thing and they get the idea for BaseNet validated externally among other developers. And the next thing you know, Jesse and 40 other builders are in the middle of the forest. Like, yes, literal forest. We're talking Idlewild, California during FWV Fest 2023, standing around a truck, if I'm like recalling that detail correctly, but there was a truck and a Starlink satellite and that is how they launched Base. And fast forward to today, Base just recently crossed its one year anniversary and is now become the most active L2. Base's positioning comes down to two things. First off, there's the backing of Coinbase. Basically, you have like this little internal startup that has the vast resources of a publicly traded company. And on top of that, Base also has the brand trust of one of the leading crypto exchanges. And if we look at Coinbase's recent earning reports, we can actually see that today, most of Coinbase's active users are institutions. So when thinking about base, there is like the speculation that like a mass adoption wave among Coinbase retail users, which, you know, if that happens, it would literally be the equivalent of a builder hitting like 100x on a meme coin trade. So like there's this speculation of like a mass adoption movement or the potential for mass adoption via Coinbase. And on the other hand, we're seeing what it looks like for a Web2 company to ultimately straddle like this on-chain world and the off-chain world, which in itself is fascinating. Coinbase at the end of the day is a publicly traded company without a token. And so far it's been one of the most successful in building out the on-chain economy. And the other thing that makes Base's positioning unique is the fact that at the core of it, it's culturally centered on developers and their ability to like rally developers to push forward Base's mission of bringing the entire world on chain. In the last month, Base continues to hit all time highs after all time highs in transactions, active addresses, and it currently has over 1.4 billion in TVL. Looking at Base's growth over the last year, keep in mind there are no incentives like there were with Blast. Jesse Pollock's take on incentives is that it just doesn't make sense to implement them unless there's a viral product. So I think we can pretty much look at this as all organic growth. And according to Jesse, the two main catalysts for BASE was one EIP 4844, which reduced gas fees to transact on L2s and Farcaster frames. They made sure that they had support for the Farcaster community on day one for base developers. You can kind of see there's like a little, I don't want to call it a builder cabal, but definitely like ties there. Jesse knew the Farcaster team um, from like the very, very early days. He was one of the very first that got onto Farcaster and you can kind of just see like a snowball effect here. And what's fascinating to me is when I think about it and when I look at what base is doing, it's really just like, doubling down on its developer community. 
The whole culture that I found on base is centered around this idea of builders helping builders, which I love. It's actually like living proof of like collaboration over competition. And what base does really well is they make sure that there's this like deep brand values alignment within the ecosystem. So everyone is like waving the base flag, kind of marching towards this broader mission. And this is playing out across so many different touch points within the base ecosystem. With experimentations like Universal Builder Income, the Base Editorial Style Guide, Basecamp, and Buildathons, it's like making sure that the developers really feel supported. And ultimately, I think this is Base's edge. There is this energy within the developer ecosystem that just like reaffirms this feeling that building on chain can help us build a better internet. Like these are the themes that I'm hearing builders talk about. So when I start to compare something like base to blast, what am I thinking about? The thing is, is I think this race to mass adoption is going to play out not over the course of the next couple of months, but rather the coming years. And if we look at the history of technology innovation, these major shifts in consumer behavior do take years to play out. So when I'm thinking about base versus blast, I'm thinking which ecosystem can foster the best developers and builders. Because as I've said before, in the long run, I don't think people will care about what chain something it's built on. It's more about the actual like product or platform itself. And it comes down to how can these ecosystems foster and support those developers, whether that's with cash or baseline tech to build the next killer app. And what's clear to me is Base and Blast ultimately have the same goal, get more people on chain and to have an actual burgeoning and robust on chain economy. And while Base is winning right now in terms of on chain traction, I still think Blast is well positioned. And this is purely based off of the new primitive that Blast introduces for builders. So looking at Coinbase and Base, I think something that is so commendable by Coinbase is this continuous push to keep pushing out new products and trying to figure out how to have repeated innovation. I really wanted Coinbase to be a company that had repeatable innovation and could have a portfolio of bets. And it requires a bit of humility to, you don't really know which ones are gonna take off. And so you gotta try a lot of small bets, shield them from the bureaucracy, give them room to run, but also be willing to kill them if they're not working. And Base's Coinbase's bet on chain. And it's also reinforcing the broader Coinbase mission, which is to increase economic freedom globally. But I do think that the dynamics of Coinbase being a publicly traded company comes into play. Ultimately, Base is a revenue driver. In quarter one and quarter two of this year, Base helped generate a significant amount of transaction revenue for Coinbase. A total of 109 million was reported for this single line item. And we can clearly see that on-chain is delivering value for a company like Coinbase. Then if we look at something like Blast, which is a crypto native approach to building on-chain, like the two things that make Blast fundamentally unique is the native yield and the gas sequencer fee sharing. Blast, unlike other L2s, redirects its sequencer fees, i.e. gas fees, back to the developers. And so this opens up a new revenue stream. To date, developers have claimed nearly 1,100 ETH, which is about the equivalent of 2.2 million in sequencer fees. And on top of that, over 8,400 ETH and 4 million USDB has been given to users through native yield. Base is further ahead on their tech stack and their scaling goal, which is one gigagas per second. Blast, on the other hand, has the native yield, which enables new application and products like refundable NFTs, for example. Base has entry points like Coinbase Wallet, and we're seeing innovation on top of that with things like Smart Wallet. Blast has yet to release its wallet, which is slated for quarter four of this year. Base is focusing on regional hackathons to create localized developer communities. Blast is focusing on mobile app development with the next big bang competition. Base has cash resources for developers with things like basic universal builder income. Blast has the incentive of Blast Gold. So as you can see here, there are a lot of things to think through, especially if you're a builder and you're trying to figure out where you want to build. And while we don't know what the future holds, one thing is clear. Base isn't just another ecosystem. There is a culture coming out of Coinbase that could very well dictate the future of the internet. 
I'm excited to see how the race for consumer continues to unfold, and I hope you are too. Ultimately, any win on any ecosystem is a win for the broader industry. And if you're like me, where you're excited about the future where on-chain is the alternative global financial system, strap in because I think it's going to be an interesting couple of years. Until the next one, bearish or bullish, keep building, keep farming, and keep learning. I'll see you guys.